Hey everybody, today we're taking a look at The Bike Riders. This was written and directed by Jeff Nichols and stars Tom Hardy, Austin Butler, and Jodie Comer. The movie was inspired by the photo book of the same name, written by Danny Lyon, who spent four years riding with and interviewing members of the Outlaws Motorcycle Club. But this movie tells a fictional story of the Vandals Motorcycle Club based out of Chicago, and any resemblance to actual persons is legally coincidental. Back in the 1960s, truck driver Johnny enjoys racing motorcycles in his spare time, and he is inspired to start his own motorcycle club after watching the movie The Wild One. It probably helps that Marlon Brando's character in that movie was also named Johnny. It starts as just a small group of friends, but soon grows into a nationwide phenomenon with chapters everywhere. And while there is a lot of focus on Johnny, the story also focuses on Benny and his wife Kathy, the latter of which serves as the movie's narrator. I got to see this movie ahead of its release, and it was interesting because it's the type of screening where they don't tell you what the movie is ahead of time. All I knew going in is that it was rated R. I was hoping for Deadpool and Wolverine, but it was not to be. However, this would have been my second choice. It was originally supposed to come out last year, but it was delayed by the SAG-AFTRA strike, and I'm glad it finally did get a release because I enjoyed this one. Now, if you saw the trailer, you may have heard Tom Hardy's accent, which I'm doing a very poor impersonation of right now. Well, be prepared for many, many more accents in this movie, from Jodie Comer, Michael Shannon, and really everyone. Jodie Comer in particular is really laying it on thick, although I feel like speaking in different accents is kind of her thing at this point. Honestly, I think Norman Reedus is the only person in this movie who spoke with his normal voice, and that's because his character is the only one not from Chicago. Now, most of the characters in this movie are not necessarily good people, except Kathy. She seems to be the one innocent in all of this. Everyone else is varying degrees of terrible, though some more than others, to be fair. But they are still interesting people and not entirely unsympathetic. The outlaws, oh, I mean the vandals, are basically a group of local outcasts. Johnny is really bored with his job and his family, and it seems like his family is kind of bored with him as well. He's the kind of guy that really wants to do something that means something, and this is his chance to do it. And at first, he's very happy to be in charge of this club, but over time, he realizes he is getting in way over his head. Michael Shannon's character, Zipko, has his own grievances. He feels betrayed by his country after the army wouldn't take him for medical reasons. There's a scene where he laments the fact that so many people don't want to go off and fight in Vietnam and the army won't take the one guy who will, go figure. There's a character played by Toby Wallace, who I believe is only referred to as the kid, and he turns to bikes as a way to avoid his abusive family. And a lot of the focus is on Austin Butler's character, Benny, who is really just trying to find his place in the world. And he's the one member of the gang who doesn't really seem like he belongs there, even though Johnny treats him like his protege. He's very emotionally distant, and it seems like he really wants to belong to something, but he's never quite all in on anything either the club or his marriage. And over time, the club grows, they add new chapters around the country, and it just grows beyond Johnny's control. And while this is officially a fictional story, there are some parallels between the Vandals and the Outlaws. As the group gets bigger and bigger, a rift kind of starts to form between the old guard of beer drinkers and the younger pot-smoking generation, and the club grows from a small group of thugs who occasionally get into a little bit of trouble into a full-fledged crime syndicate. And through it all, we have Kathy telling the story of the club to Danny Lyon, played by Mike Faced, the only character in the movie with a last name. And even with the very thick accent, Jodie Comer is really good in this role, and you can see why she would be attracted to this kind of life, and also why she really should not have been and ultimately got the hell out. Really, the entire cast was great top to bottom. I have no complaints there. They all did a fantastic job. And this is a very gritty, hard-hitting movie, sometimes literally. There's one particularly brutal scene where poor Benny just gets the shit beat out of him. The man almost had to have his foot amputated, and yet he still got off easy compared to some of his fellow bikers. I do have one complaint about this movie, and that is Norman Reedus' god-awful prosthetic teeth. They just looked so fake, and they were really unnecessary. I'm guessing they did it because they were trying to make his character look like one of the actual outlaws, but they really didn't have to, and it was kind of distracting. But that's really it. This is a very entertaining look at biker culture with an incredibly talented cast, and I enjoyed the hell out of it. And if you want to see a good biker movie with some silly accents, I recommend checking it out. And that's all I have to say about the bike riders. Till next time, take care.